Okay, um, I think it's about time. Uh, let's get started. First, thanks for coming. Um, uh, this talk is about uh, Compass. It's a system helped us to streamline the open OpenStack deployment process. Uh, my name is Shuo Yang. Uh, I'm a principal architect of uh, cloud computing in Huawei US R&D Center. Uh, before joining Huawei, uh, I worked for Google for four years in their infrastructure team. <coughs> so uh, this talk, I first like to uh, discuss with you guys uh, what problem we are trying to solve. Um, I think uh, in this conference, there are a lot of, lot of uh, similar topic. Hopefully after this uh, talk, uh, I can give you uh, my vision and our vision uh, what this problem, what this uh, system is uh, special and uh, hopefully I'm, I'm giving the talk to seeking for help. Uh, we can, together, we can hopefully build a system uh, in the long run. So to, um, to talk about the compass, I need to uh, bring the uh, you know, context when, when we started this, this conversation. Uh, when we started the, you know, this uh, compass design, we decided we have a pretty ambitious goal. Our goal was to, uh, deploy any complex you know, distrib distributed system into general purpose uh, uh, you know, commodity servers. And with that goal, uh, I think uh, our primary design decision from day one was uh, build a system that is, uh, you know, extensibility is our first priority. And uh, having said that, uh, you know, you know, original design goal, uh, we, we know we were not you know, trying to limit ourselves to deploying OpenStack. But uh, <coughs> it, you know, our first working system, you know, sh we streamlined open, OpenStack deploying process. And I will show you in a demo. And uh, this will be open source, uh, totally, uh, you know, um, we will open source all our code, you know, 100 uh, Python. And uh, as I said, our design our design goal was to you know, make the system extensible. We have our architecture designed as, uh, you know, as modular as possible, you know, at least uh, you know, in the philosophy level. And we have our implementation have this uh, real plugin based uh, you know, um, implementation. And to give you a concrete example, we uh, have the system to deploy our OpenStack cluster onto Huawei's hardware but we add the 200 lines of code to have this uh, HP hardware plugin, and that works fine with us. So you, you get a sense of you know, how, how, how cheap it could be to extend our system. And we have successfully uh, deployed several dog food cluster, and uh, uh, this is our uh, wiki page. Um, before uh, talking about this uh, system itself, I'd like to you know, bring up a concept. I think this is uh, um, this called the data center as a computer. It's a pretty, uh, you know, and I think uh, we share the true uh, you know, vision from this uh, industry uh, veterans. Uh, this is a book published by uh, several Googlers. And uh, I think the last uh, author in this book is also a pioneer in software-defined networking. So <coughs> let's uh, look at uh, what, what it looked like for a computer in the 90s. In the 90s, we have uh, uh, you know, CPUs, we have uh, you know, disks as the uh, storage capacity device, we have uh, NICs as the networking uh, devices. And uh, fortunately, at that moment, we had uh, you know, an open source uh, operating system uh, called uh, Linux. But if you really go back to uh, early 90s, um, you know, the, the experience of using such a system is not as pleasant as today. Uh, so you know, tools like uh, Lilo's uh, Grub were invented. And uh, you know, nowadays, if you, if you really want to use uh, Linux computer, then you bring in a live CD, everything you know, works like a blink. So let's fast forward to today's data center. We have a similar picture. We have a Huawei's, oh sorry, <laughs> any uh, you know, server, gen, uh, you know, commodity server, um, as, a, as a, the data center CPU. 
we have uh, the uh, storage server as the you know, data center uh, storage capacity. We have the switch as the data center level uh, you know, networking gear. And uh, equally fortunately, as of today, we have uh, OpenStack, another truly open sourced uh, uh, you know, data center level operating system. But what is missing? I think uh, uh, nowadays, I will show you in a later uh, slides, nowadays several vendors are trying to work out a you know, streamlined uh, deployment uh, system. And uh, I think it's still a very uh, vibrant uh, area for people to work on. Uh, I think I attended uh, several uh, uh, talk and the one, when the speaker, you know, ask people, say, you know, how many, how many you guys, you know, use the, any particular tool to deploy this, uh, you know, OpenStack, I, I, I see like less than 10% raise their hand. But <clears throat> I think that's the reality. Uh, and um, that's why, and, and also I like to uh, say why, you know, uh, Huawei wants to work out a system like this. Because Huawei is a full hardware vendor in the uh, data center solution portfolio. It was uh, you know, ranked as number one for you know, storage revenue growth, number two as uh, x86 uh, server gro revenue growth, and uh, needless to say, Huawei has a pretty strong you know, uh, stance in networking gear uh, space. So uh, OpenStack, we love OpenStack because OpenStack enable us to build, build a truly, uh, you know, distributed uh, uh, data center solution. And uh, as I said, you know, this is a pretty vibrant uh, uh, area. So several vendors are uh, working very hard to work out a system to, to solve this problem. I think this is a great thing. I think the competition is a good thing for the customer. Um, I can quickly go through this. Um, Curvar from Dell, I think originally, uh, it's uh, a pretty pioneer uh, effort. I think uh, it probably in the industry the first uh, effort to solve this problem. Um, but th I think that's a uh, Ruby web application. Um, and uh, to, to, to be fair, I think it's, from my view, it's a little conglomerate. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say what I mean by that. And then uh, the second system, you know, now, you know, is especially in this uh, conference, you know, people are talking about the triple O. I think this is a great idea, a very attractive idea for OpenStack community itself. But uh, in my view, do you want to combine a, you know, a pretty generous, general uh, problem into a particular distributed system? That's, that's some debate uh, we can have. Um, and then Fuel is a great, uh, another great uh, web application. Uh, it's a Puppet-based uh, um, system. And uh, DevStack, I think uh, any uh, OpenStack developer uh, in this community uh, must have used uh, this uh, uh, tool uh, when you write code. Uh, but that's a pretty, uh, I think that's a pretty like a simple system test idea, uh, uh, at least in general in this, uh, <coughs> in this community's uh, view. So let's think of this, as I said, I keep saying uh, data center, um, you know. By the way, anyone knows which, which uh, you know, company's data center are these uh, pictures showing? Yeah, great. I, uh, the, the, bottom line, uh, the bottom picture is showing Google's uh, data center, and the uh, upper one, do you know? <laughs> That's uh, Rackspace uh, data center. Uh, all these are from uh, uh, my Google search result. Um, anyway, uh, so let's, let's really think of, you know, what, what can be automated and what is not. Um, so first of all, I think all the tools I just mentioned, including uh, Composite itself, is trying to solve a problem that zero-touch uh, software deployment process. But uh, uh, before that, you need to um, have a rack and stack uh, per process. You need to wear them up. You need to, you know, bring the uh, bring the rack to the right place. Uh, if you you guys are interested, uh, I heard of uh, you know several Robert, uh, you know, startup are doing this uh, stuff. Um, <coughs> furthermore, um, I I think it's a big furthermore. Uh, if we, we really have some uh, AI breakthrough, 
right? We can, you know, ask an AI system to help us to, uh, to design and, uh, you know, uh, configure the whole data center um, layout. So um, how many of you guys, uh, you know, attended my other talk yesterday? Can you give me a show hand? Okay, so less than half. Then if that's, that's the case, I'd like to show you, show you guys a real video clip, you know, recorded uh, by our first, uh, you know, uh, system deployment. This is the, you know, diagram view of uh, um, our, this is a, uh, you know, phys uh, physical diagram view of our, uh, you know, installation. And uh, I'll show you what has happened. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So these are the uh, commodity servers, uh, Huawei server, uh, and uh, this is a uh, Huawei switch, and this is uh, you know the router. And uh, all we need is uh, you know uh, network connectivity, and this is a VM of you know Compass VM. Yeah, that's the managed plane. Yeah. Data plane. Uh, data plane is a, a separate wire. I, I can show you, you know, in in this view, in this uh, video. So as I said, you know, uh, first. Uh, we haven't uh, automated this uh, rack and step uh, stack per, uh, step. This is our uh, um, R&D cent uh, data center, and this is uh, the network layout. <laughs> so, Compass is a RESTful server, and uh, we have a uh, uh, purely client side uh, UI. And uh, then this is that what. Uh, Compass is trying to solve, to automate. Uh, as I said, this is a purely uh, client-side uh, web UI. It's a, a wizard-based, uh, you know, process. And uh, it, it can continue to consume the, uh, you know, uh, RESTful API uh, to enable this whole process. And this is basically saying, oh, you, you need to uh, remind the operator you need to have the right uh, you know, wire connection. This step uh, shows us that Compass provides a capability that it can automatically discover the servers connected to a particular uh, switch. This provides us a capability, a capability of uh, network awareness, you know, top topology awareness. And once you have, uh, you know, that management IP of the switch, you can find all the server connected to that. Normally, you, you would uh, select all because that you know reflect the case of deploying a, you know OpenStack cluster to a bunch of uh, you know racks. But in this case, this is a demo purpose. We select. This discovery, great question. Uh, this discovery, we just uh, walk through the. Uh, the, the SNMP MIPS, every vendor will, will uh, you know, provide. And th that's, m most of vendor you know, implement the standard uh, MIPS, uh, you know, the on the, on the uh, uh, switch side. The, it, 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 it has this uh, link up, you, whenever you have a you know, server link up, it will the, the switch will ca catch it. It's uh, uh, no, it's a control plane interface. Right. We can discuss this, uh, you know, offline if you you are interested. So this one, uh, basically, you know, this is the wizard step for the operator to, you know, uh, input all the credentials. And uh, after uh, th finishing this step, the next step is uh, you know network configuration. Uh, 
for network configuration, uh, we know that this is the most uh, error-prone step for uh, setting up a cluster. Um, the operator can uh, provide a set of uh, IP range for different uh, networks. Um, for this one, uh, management plane and uh, you know uh, public network are need to uh, config ex explicitly, uh, but uh, tenant network and the storage network can be used as is uh, because that's not uh, what user uh, what end user will see. Um, <coughs> so this one, uh, you provide public uh, network IP range. By the way, uh, this this UI itself is just the showcase of how much RESTful API capability we can consume. We can, you know, uh, I will show you in a, in a, you know, slides. This, basically this uh, RESTful API approach allows third party UI to work with our backend. So this is a step for uh, operators to automatically It, that's uh, the 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 how to say um, I I think that's the OpenStack private uh, uh, network. It's a quantum network. Yeah, quant uh, yes, the the the, the quantum the network for for the uh, uh, cloud. Yes. So uh, this one is showing you the step automatically uh, assign the host name to. Uh, host name to the uh, servers because if if you think of uh, think of uh, the process of uh, oops if you think of the process of uh, you know assigning ip to the uh, to the servers that's uh, if you you assign a couple of hundreds of nodes that's a pretty uh, you know time consuming uh, step Oh, I'll, I'll answer that question. We, yeah, we. When I talk about this, uh, this uh, you know particular uh, function module, I'll answer that question. Yeah. So we have this. Uh, <coughs> as I said, we have this uh, network topology information. We can show the uh, real time progress of uh, deployment along with the network uh, topology um, in, uh, view. And uh, not only that, we can also, also show you the uh, list view, right? Just the regular view of uh, your uh, server. Um, I think it takes a little longer in the uh, server, th uh, server three, which is the controller node, because I need to uh, install the, uh, the database, uh, RevDMQ, all these extra uh, packages. So, It's complete, and uh, as I said, this is the graph view, topology view, and we have a list view. And after that, uh, we are done with the deployment. Let's uh, you know uh, play with the the deploy the system a, a little bit. You log into a project. You created uh, you know couple of uh, network provided by a. Uh, Neutron, uh, you know, when we when we use this uh, uh, project, it's uh, called uh, uh, Quantum. So <coughs> this is the second network, I think, and uh, we have this uh, network uh, up, and uh, we created a, a virtual machine. And connect them to the uh, to the network. So this is the topology. Uh, I, you can keep uh, playing around. I will stay uh, stop uh, playing the the video here. And uh, let's proceed. Uh, <coughs> so basically, that's the high level idea of uh, what uh, Campus is trying to solve, and. Uh, Actually, at, although it's a uh, you know general purpose uh, system, we we'll try to build. 
um, I'm showing you the, the real system we have uh, deployed. So um, let's, let's think of you know, why we, we would like to build a general purpose uh, deployment system. Because uh, in our view, that a life of de deployment should uh, be, be viewed pretty, pretty much similar to each other. From a, from a hardware vendor perspective, you provide a pool of uh, resources. They are connected through the, the, networ you know, the network gears. And uh, you need to somehow you know, deploy the uh, host OS or some, some kind of uh, hypervisor. Right? And after that, you need to deploy a pool of uh, processes, right? no matter that's uh, uh, you know, Ceph or you know, OpenStack, along with the correct configuration. By correctly configure, config every uh, process in, in this uh, pool, you are able to form a distributed system. That's how a distributed system works, right? And uh, <coughs> if you look at that, uh, you know, different layer of resources um, has, has uh, pretty much provided uh, us the programmability, right? As an MP, as the interface to control the, the uh, networking gear, IPMI to control the, uh, you know, um, server, and uh, for OS provisioning, um, we have this OS provisioning tool set like uh, Cobbler uh, Razor, right? And uh, for the uh, process deployment and the configuration, uh, you know, updates, you have a Chef and Puppet and Ansible. Uh, you, ha you can list a bunch of them. So Compass is not to, you know, rebuild any tool, tool chain, you know, any tool set in this tool chain. We are trying to glue them together, build another layer of uh, software so that do, do away with the you know, repeated uh, uh, boilermaker, uh, uh, boilerplate uh, code. Have the operator to focus the problem they want to solve. What kind of a system you really want to uh, deploy? And uh, we can, um, by, by doing that, you know, um, we hope we can you know, liberate some burden from the uh, operator. So, uh, as I said, from day one, we, we really wanted to build a, um, a general-purpose si general uh, deployment system. So, having that, we have a strong philosophy about uh, what Compass should be. We provide programmability, we provide uh, extensibility. Prog programmability meaning, instead of building a web application, we build a, a REST API server. Um, Extensibility, there are several you know, uh, interpretations of this from different angles. Uh, first of all, we build uh, you know, functional modules with plug-in architecture. As I said, uh, you know, to extend our support to HP switch, we add 200 lines of code. And uh, we carefully designed the boundary what you know, cobbler, uh, sorry, what a compass is not, not to be, right? We want to build a system not to reinvent any view. We want to work with this, uh, you know, existing mature tools. So <coughs> that's why we, we just uh, write 5,000 lines code. We, we are able to, um, you know, have this uh, streamlined the process. And this is a kind of internal, you know, architectural view um, of the system. As I said, the, the UI I showed you is uh, totally written in, uh, uh, you know, uh, client-side JavaScript MVC framework. And um, we have a RESTful API to provide the programmability to the end user. We have uh, this, uh, you know, hardware discover module, the uh, package deployment module, and the uh, OS provision module. Uh, we, we have planned to add more modules because we know uh, we, we can e even, you know, automate some process. So, um, as I said, you know, all this, uh, you know, uh, vendor-specific or a, um, you know, toolset-specific spe code uh, live in this layer. And um, by having that, you know, we achieve this uh, 200, 200 lines of code to, to support, uh, you know, other devices. And also, if you think of this, right, nowadays we are working, w working with, uh, you know, chef servers to, you know, do this, uh, uh, configuration management. Uh, it's a similar concept. You can write a, a similar plugin for other configuration management tool. Our, our belief is that having that capability 
enables the enterprise um, uh, environment that think of this you do in, in, in some uh, enterprise environment you already purchased the puppet uh, you know license you already purchased uh, you know uh, ansible servers uh, you know uh, support if if we are able to enable those you know two two sets you know uh, to work in your system that would be great so um, same thing for the OS provisioning tool. I do not want to uh, spend too much time on this. Um, so programmable, meaning um, we want to ma model all the software deployment uh, you know, steps into uh, RESTful uh, resources. This includes uh, machines, switches, uh, clusters, hosts. And I think uh, something deserve mentioning here is a, a concept we call the adapter. Um, adapter is, uh, you know, is a plugin module to discover, uh, con config, and uh, you know, uh, deploy hosts. So, for example, I, I will give you a concrete example. For example, OpenStack uh, installed, uh, configed by a Chef is a adapter, right? If you your in your system, you have a uh, puppet. You have puppet. Uh, you know whatever you called. Um, I don't know puppets. Uh, you know uh, term. But if you have a, some kind of cookbook stuff in the puppet world, right? And that's that's the uh, you know adapter to the. That's another adapter to to allow us to uh, install the OpenStack. Uh, I I think uh, I will leave this. You know to have a. Q&A session. I like to discuss with you guys for this concept, and this is all about a RESTful concept, right? Uh, we try to mimic, uh, you know, Open OpenStack's, uh, you know, API standard as much as possible. Uh, I don't want to, you know, spend too much time on this. And then let's look at what what after having this uh, uh, system, the end user will be using this system. So. Basically, a deployment of your target system becomes a list of a RESTful call, right? Think of uh, you know what you when you want to uh, deploy a OpenStack cluster, then you will say, find f help me find all the available machine, right? And in our previous uh, uh, example, say select all the all the, the machine I want to deploy the system onto, right? And then Find help me find a uh, adapter, right? At this moment, I want to, you know, deploy OpenStack, and uh, having that, you know, the uh, adapter provide you a list of, uh, you know, roles, um, a group of, uh, you know, functionalities. You say, okay, I I understand that you, you know for this particular target system, you have this uh, bunch of, uh, uh, you know, roles, and then. For most of the you know existing tools, I think when when people uh, say this is you know the, the 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 installation process is streamlined, they are basically you know mapping to our model you know auto let's deploy this system automatically by whatever you know the system you know describe uh, it should be. But for us, we can say oh I know if I'm a you know I'm a user, I can program the system saying. Oh, I want to, you know, node number one to host the controller, and uh, node number two, uh, two, three, four to host, uh, you know, compute. Right? That's just to give you a flavor. And then after that, this is this, uh, you know, pull the pr progress, and uh, hopefully you are done with that. So um, another um, key concept we want to keep in this uh, whole um, system de design the implementation is to not to be a con conglomerate, right? We want to have a plugin architecture. So at this moment, as I said, we use uh, Chef as our uh, configuration management uh, uh, engine. But uh, you know, if uh, people have this requirement for working on Puppet and Ansible, uh, we love to hear your uh, feedback. And uh, also, we have a plugin architecture for you know hardware, right? We uh, we provide, as I showed you, um, we provide a networking gear based environmental uh, discovery so that we can uh, have this uh, topology awareness. Um, so 
another key, I, I, I person, my personal interest right now is, you know, I think the people see this OCP concept. It's another hardware layer, you know, open sourcing hardware, right? If uh, any audience, uh, you know, ha has inf is interested in this uh, concept or from that uh, community, I love to uh, discuss with you. So um, another concept of uh, not not to provide a conglomerate uh, system is that we believe we need to learn something from the several decades of programming uh, experience. We need to we need to separate a role in a particular system. We need to have library writer, and we need to have a application writer, right? Uh, library writer meaning um, so so in our in our case in in this uh, compass uh, context, you need to uh, provide the uh, policy. You know, for example, you don't want to put if you have a HA configuration in your uh, in your OpenStack uh, cluster, you don't want to put two database onto the same server, right? That's policy. And uh, also, you provide all the you know um, snippet and kickstart file for your you know OS level uh, description. And having that, basically, that's like uh, you know libc, right? You 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 write libc, you allow the uh, application writer to use it, and then the application writer becomes, you know, issuing a, a bunch of, uh, you know, RESTful API, API call. So that's, I think, that's why we think we, we shouldn't allow, you know, uh, we, we shouldn't, uh, you know, have a system and ask the user to repeat themselves, you know, constantly. Um, and in the, in, the, in the demo case, you know, we provided the library, right? And uh, you can imagine for Hadoop, for Ceph, which is a particular uh, of interest to this uh, OpenStack community, you can provide your library. Um, so I think, uh, <coughs> I think uh, uh, the last part, I'd like to talk about a little bit uh, our vision, right? You know, what we already deployed the OpenStack, what we want to do next. I think uh, <coughs> right now, as, as this, uh, you know, three axes, uh, we are able. We successfully deployed the uh, you know OpenStack on top of uh, CentOS, and uh, actually uh, we you know for, for Ubuntu, uh, I, I think it's the second system we support. We are supporting. Uh, we have a last you know, some last minute uh, tweak, but I think that can claim that as uh, you know a successful um, step. And then the next step is uh, we should be able to support. Hadoop, Ceph, or any other you know complex uh, 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 distributed system, and we should be able to you know in enable the support of other host OS or other a you know hypervisor, and we should be able to work on different uh, uh, hardware. And uh, if you think of this, as we said, do not repeat yourself. Once you write uh, something, write a library here, you should, you should be able, once somebody else you know, have, has already written the modules for this, your library should work across all this uh, platform. So instead of you multipl multiply the, the code base, you add them as a linear uh, you know, code uh, growth. So <coughs> another extensibility is the toolchain extensibility. At this moment, we support Chef. Uh, we, sub we use uh, Cobbler as our uh, OS provisioning tool. We certainly uh, see the you know, um, other tools is, uh, in the market. And as I said, you know, especially in the enterprise scenario, right, you already purchased, you are you already committed to a particular tool set. You, you shouldn't, uh, <laughs> we shouldn't require the user to switch their tool set because they they chose you know using uh, Compass, and also same thing right uh, for OS provisioning. Uh, there are lots of other uh, alter uh, alternative there. So I think uh, that's conclude my talk. Um, as I said, uh, our ultimate goal is to trying to build a 
general purpose deployment system. Uh, we, are, we have deployed uh, OpenStack cloud infrastructure, infrastructure smoothly. Uh, this is basically provide uh, programmability to the end users. Uh, we really, uh, we come here to give this talk really to, you know, seek the opportunity to collaborate. Uh, we, we hope with this uh, vision, if we, you guys share the vision, uh, we can you know, discuss and uh, build something last long. And uh, by the way, uh, we will open source this uh, soon under Apache 2.0 uh, license. Uh, I welcome any questions and discussions. Yeah, please. Uh, I think it, it should be done uh, by the end of November. It should be uh, later than that. Yep, you're welcome. Uh, so, there, great. I think the question is, uh, if something goes wrong with the deployment process, do, can you make it up? Or you know, can you, can you re redo something, right? So th that's a great question. Um, I think there are se several steps. Uh, as I said, this UI is just a you know, proof of concept uh, saying, oh, you can consume this, uh, uh, this uh, you know, API cost. But uh, uh, actually, this, this video is made, uh, I think, uh, a uh, couple of months ago. Uh, so I think my c our current UI allows the user to go back to, you know, if you have some, some uh, you know, configuration, you later in the later process, you, s you feel that's not the correct, correct uh, configuration, you can always go back. Great, great question. I think uh, uh, we we decided early on what this project is not to be. This is, this project itself would not, you know, uh, to to do the monitoring, do do anything. The reason is not we are not capable of doing that because um, actually we, we we are doing that. Uh, but if you really think of what a project could live long, you should commit yourself not to do something. So that we can, uh, you know, work with uh, other tools together to build a great system. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh,